you saw my last video, you saw that I wasn't super duper excited about the Leica Q3. Now that's not to say I'm not going to get one and try it. <laughs> I'm just saying I wish they had made some more significant improvements and advancements in that camera, such as a 35 millimeter focal length lens, like a Summicron, smaller, lighter, better focal length on the Q3. That would have been really exciting. So while I wait for the Q3 to become readily available, i.e. someone selling a used Q3 cheaper than the new price, <laughs> I decided I'm gonna make a series of videos about Q3 alternatives. The first camera I tried as a Q3 alternative is this, the Fuji X-T5. This is a sweet little camera, I'll tell you what. I think the most important thing to discuss in this camera is the APS-C sensor. It's the highest megapixel sensor ever for an APS-C camera. But what made me most interested about this camera is that if you look at the spec sheet of this camera, you'll see that Fujifilm has listed this camera as having 16-bit color rendition. All other digital cameras that aren't medium format that I know of all have 14-bit color rendition. Sony's, Canon's, Leicon's, Nikon's, Chikon's, Ficon's, <laughs> Picon's, Pentax's, you name it, all 14-bit color. <laughs> So I was very curious what exactly that meant in terms of an APS-C sensor. All the digital medium format cameras I'm trying right now, the Fujifilm GFX 100, as well as the Leica S3 have 16-bit color, as does the Hasselblad X2D, and I've made a video about my thoughts on that camera. So I wanted to see if that same 16-bit color rendition, the deeper tones, the wider range of tonality and shades and hues of the colors would translate on such a small sensor. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, depending on how you look at it, it is not quite the same thing. While the improvements that Fuji made to this sensor are impressive, I think that it more so brings it in line with full frame cameras, perhaps more like a Canon R6 II or a Sony A7 IV. It doesn't really bring the quality up to medium format in terms of color rendition. That's still impressive, don't get me wrong. I don't have a Sony a7 IV here, uh, but I do have a Leica M11 and a Sony a7R5 here. It is quite close, and I'm sure with YouTube compression, you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference between those full-frame cameras and the Fuji. Quite an impressive showing for the Fuji. However, for me, this really isn't enough of a reason to switch camera systems. I really, really like the Fuji system, but having full-frame or medium format size sensors is more where it's at for me. The cost of buying new lenses and buying a couple of Fuji cameras isn't worth it, although they are very value priced. When I already have lenses and all the accoutrement for other camera systems. <laughs> Man, the shooting experience of the Fuji X-T5 is sublime. It's almost Leica-like in its tactile nature. All the dials and, and uh, buttons on top of the camera, it's just great. I love the... MSC uh, switch here, so you can switch between manual continuous and single point autofocus. Just great. Shutter speed, ISO, right at your fingertips. Just, just a great way to do a camera. I wish more camera ma manufacturers would do this with the dials, so you don't have to dive into the menu system. You can change all your key settings on the camera. Aperture ring on the lens, shutter speed, ISO, boom, you've got your exposure triangle. Don't even have to look at the menus. Another thing I really like about Fuji cameras that I wish other manufacturers would mimic is the on-screen shooting controls. They have a histogram. They have highlight blinkies, which I don't understand how it's possible that only Leica digital cameras like the SL2 and Fuji cameras have. <laughs> Panasonic and Sony have zebras. But that's more a filmmaker's tool, not a photographer's tool. Canon and Nikon don't have any highlight blinkies in live view. Blows my mind. Also, I like that you can change the uh, manual focus distance scale to feet, and it's fairly accurate as focused by wire lens manual focusing goes. I also like that all of the settings change when you tilt the camera. All of these little refinements that Fuji has done on this camera really make it a joy to shoot with. It's the kind of camera that you'll reach for over and over again over other cameras just because it's so fun to shoot with. As I said before, the sensor improvements that Fuji made on this camera really are impressive, but it's still an APS-C camera. That means less 
wide angle lenses, especially with super wide focal lengths. I'd say past uh, 21 millimeters, you're really gonna feel it. Although Fuji does have an eight millimeter, which is like a 16 millimeter focal length equivalent coming out. Um, but I have a feeling it won't be quite the same as a full frame one. And then of course, all the depth of field advantages that you lose between uh, full frame and APS-C cameras. The APS-C cameras just can't really go to a 1.2 the same way that a full frame looks with one at f1.2. Having said all that, I do see more image noise in the APS-C camera than in a full frame sensor. There's just no getting around it, even with the sensor improvements that Fuji has made. Another huge pet peeve is that the Fuji cameras do not have the shutter come down when you turn the camera off, or an option to do that. So anytime you're changing a lens, the sensor is exposed to dust, moisture, etc. That drives me nuts. Fuji, you gotta change this. Get that shutter down. Beyond that, I don't really have any other dislikes. This camera is a joy to shoot with, and I would highly recommend it to anyone. In the sort of neutral category, the only thing I have to say is that I think that um, the promise of digital cameras was to have smaller bodies and smaller lenses. Canon and Nikon certainly have not gone that way. The Fuji, being an APS-C camera, does come true to that promise somewhat. There's a number of small lenses and small-ish bodies, like this setup, um, that make it almost pocketable, and that's great. This could also be a, uh, not only being a Q3 uh, replacement, this is also an X100V replacement, and I would argue this is a better replacement than the X100V based on the higher quality sensor in the camera. Another thing that's probably more personal to me than anything else that I don't like about this camera is the film simulations. Just give me a standard profile like any other digital camera, probably ideally tuned to something like the Canon standard profile. I think that's the most pleasing standard profile on the market, perhaps uh, next to the Leica standard profile. That's also great. That's more artistic than um, sort of real life, uh, you know, easy to use right out of the camera. I'm just not somebody that is going to make a whole bunch of adjustments in camera. I know a lot of people like to do it that way, but I'm a post processor. What can I say? So for me, all the film simulations are kind of annoying in that you can't get a standard profile and it actually adds more work in post changing the different film simulation that you happen to choose in the Fuji back to something more real life or however you wanted to tune it in post. In sum, I think the Fuji X-T5 and its bigger brother, the X-H2, are fabulous cameras and anyone would be happy with such a camera. If you're coming in to digital photography and haven't bought a cam and haven't bought into a camera system yet, I would highly recommend taking a look at the Fuji cameras. Indeed, with this new sensor in them, I think that these are versatile, can-do cameras. Great video features, great photography features, at an excellent price. So if you haven't bought into a camera system and are thinking about Fuji, I say definitely take a look. You could definitely use this for many professional applications, including wedding photography, landscape photography, street photography, and maybe even bird, animal, and wildlife photography. However, for me, some of the niggles of this camera combined with the smaller sensor just make it so that I probably won't be keeping the camera. I have invested too much in Leica and other systems to go out, buy new bodies, new lenses, etc. But if that's not the case, you, either you want to buy into a new system, you want a great everyday carry camera, or you're looking to invest in a, a professional system from the ground up, this is a great way to go at a great price. What are your thoughts about the Fuji X-T5 and X-H2? Would you buy into this system? Have you looked at this camera? Let me know in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Tickle the bell. I'll see you in the next one. Pop, pop, bam.